video I'm going to show you how to analyze the data that you have curated from the three CSV files for velocity acceleration and rotation velocity omega z. Um, the last thing we did in the previous video was create a column for the absolute value of omega z and that's this column here. I'm just going to move some of these columns around. This is for the sake of convenience. So I'm going to insert a column here. I'm going to copy this column or cut it and paste it over here. And similarly, I'm going to create a column in here. I'm going to call this column the norm of the acceleration, which is equal to square root of the components squared. There we go. I'm just going to do this calculation for all the rows. So now I have the norm of the acceleration, the magnitude of the y component of the velocity, and uh, the z component of the angular velocity. So the first thing I'd like to do is to make a plot of omega z versus vy. So I go to insert and then I create a scatter plot. I'm going to move this chart to a new sheet called velocity versus omega. And it shows up here as a large sheet. I'm going to right click on the data and add a trend line. And the default is a linear one. I'm going to ask Excel to display the equation on the chart. And I'm going to move this over here and just make it a little bit bigger so you can see the equation a little bit better. So there is the equation. So you can see it has the slope and it has the intercept. Now this is mathematically fine. However, the way that uh, rotational uh, velocity and uh, tangential velocity, the way they're related in the physical world uh, for something that goes um, around a circle is that the tangential velocity is uh, proportional to the rotational velocity and the intercept is zero. That means v is simply equal to omega times r. So if I were to extend this line backwards, ideally this intercept should be zero, but that is not the case for this trend line. So I'm going to delete this and we're going to make our own fit to the data. So how do we do that? We go back to the sheet. We're going to create a column here called fit. And the type of fit that we're going to make is omega times r. That's the fit that we'd like to do. So that means we need a value for r. So let's come over here. I'm going to give a value for r. I'm going to guess that it's about 19 centimeters or 0.19 meters. And uh, so using this guess, I can get values for omega times r for all these different values of omega. So I go omega, multiply that by this value for r, and I have to put dollar signs here because I don't want that to change. So there it is. Those are all the values for omega r. Now, of course, you'll notice that this is not the same as uh, vy, there's quite a discrepancy, so there's a residual, which is the difference in the two. So the residual is defined as uh, vy minus the fit, and I can do this for all the data points, and I can also get the square of the residual, which is simply this quantity squared, and I calculate that for all the, for all the columns. Or, or rather all the rows. So there they are. The last thing I want to do is to calculate something called the square, the sum of the square of the residuals. So that's called SSR. This is the sum of all these residuals or squared. So when I do that, I get this value here in this color, in this cell rather. So what I want is to now change R so that this fit is as good as it can be. So that means we need to optimize the value for r such that the residuals are minimized. So how do we do that in Excel? Well, we want to minimize the sum of the square of the residuals. So to do that, we click on that cell. Then we go to data here. And then up here, you'll see there are two uh, tools. One of them is called analysis tools, and the other is called solver. I'm going to click on analysis tools. And notice that some add-ins are available. I have already added the solver add-in, so that's why it shows up over here. So if you haven't done that, please check that and that will add the solver to Excel. So there's the solver. Now I'm going to click on solver, and I'm going to do something to this cell, right? So that's cell N5 in the sheet. 
I'm going to try and minimize that cell by changing the values of this cell, right? The radius. And I'm going to just go with the, the default algorithm and I'm going to hit solve. So hopefully it finds a solution and there it is, it found a solution. So the solution that it obtained, which minimized the residual or, or the sum of the square of the residuals is this value for ours. That's about 22 centimeters. So my guess wasn't that far off the mark. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this sheet and I'm going to add a data series. And the data series I'm going to add, I'm going to call it the fit. And uh, the x values for that fit are nothing but the values for omega. And the y values for the fit are the values that we have just obtained for the fit by optimizing the value of r. So now when I add this, you'll see that it populates that as these orange dots. That's the model that we have just optimized. Now, uh, this model is just omega times r. So when omega goes to zero, v will also go to zero naturally, right? Okay, so I want to just make some cosmetic changes. Um, I'm going to right click on um, the data series. I'm going to say format data series. And uh, I want to change some options here. So I want it to have a solid black line, like so. And uh, I don't want it to have a marker. Right, and uh, there it is. But I do want to add some some text here. So the way to do that is to go to insert and then add a text box over here. And the text I want to add is uh, V equal to omega R. And uh, it's going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. And uh, I'm going to say that V equal to omega R is just this uh, line that we have obtained. So I'm just going to point that at the trend line that we have just made. So there's your optimized trend line and the physically correct one, which has an intercept of zero. So that's the optimized line. The next thing we want to do is to do the same analysis for the acceleration. However, we plot the acceleration not as a function of omega, but as a function of omega squared. So I need to add a new column in here. So let me do that. I'm going to add a column called omega squared. And so this is equal to the values of omega squared. So I'm just going to do that calculation for all the rows. So there's omega squared. So now I'd like to plot omega squared on the x-axis and the norm of the acceleration on the y-axis. So to do that, I have to select those two columns. So there we go. Those columns have been selected. I try and insert a scatter plot. There it is. I'm going to move this to a new sheet so it's nice and large. I'm going to call this a sub c because that is the acceleration we're after, the centripetal acceleration, versus omega squared. The norm of the acceleration is quite simply the centripetal acceleration. So there it is. So there's this. As you can see, there's a lot of scatter here. So on the y-axis, we have the centripetal acceleration. And on the x-axis, we have omega squared. So this is what it looks like. So what we can do is we can click on the data and add a trend line here. I'm going to add a linear trend line. I'm going to ask Excel to display the equation on the chart. I'm just going to change uh, some cosmetics. I'm going to make it a red line and uh, I'm going to change the line type to a solid line. Uh, there it is. I'm just going to move this out here and make it a little bit bigger so you can see what the equation is. So there's the equation. And I'm just going to point an arrow so that you know which line I'm talking about with this equation. So there it is. So there's the trend line that Excel gives you. So Excel did some optimization. It tells you that the slope is 0.2193 and uh, the intercept is 0 0.4307. Once again, mathematically this is fine. This is probably the best linear fit that you can make to this, uh, according to the scatter and the data. So mathematically this is fine. However, physically it doesn't make sense to have a non-zero intercept. So the dependence of the acceleration on the um, uh, square of the uh, angular velocity is that uh, there's a li linear relationship, however, the intercept is zero, which means that when there is zero angular velocity, the acceleration in the centripetal direction must also be zero. So that means this must not exist, this must be zero. So we're going to have to do our own fit. 
But fortunately, we've already optimized a, a, a fit and discovered that the value for R, the optimized value for R, is 0.2217, as seen in this cell over here. So all we need to do is to make over here a column called omega squared R. Um, so there it is, omega squared times R. So this is simply going to be equal to the value of omega squared multiplied by the optimized value for R. And I have to make sure that I put dollar signs and then I just have to do this. Right? So this is the value for the acceleration that is optimized. So now if I take uh, omega squared on the x-axis and then plot that versus the newly fitted value for omega squared r. So this is the plot that I'd like to make, but I, I don't want to make a new uh, plot. I'm just going to add this to this original plot. So I go here, and I have to select data. I'm going to add a new fit. And the x-axis is just omega squared. So that's just this value, all of these guys. And then I have to select the y values, which are the newly calculated values of omega squared r, which are all of these guys. And I say OK, and you can see that it fits it right there. So there's the orange uh, linear fit. You can see it's basically parallel to the to the trend line that Excel gave you. So I'm going to do some cosmetic changes here. I'm going to format the data series. I'm going to say I want a solid line, and I don't want to mark a and I'm going to change the line color to black. That's not the one. There we go. So the line color is black. And I don't want any marker at all. And border is also none. Okay, so there we go. So there's the there's the fit. And I'm going to just add um, text here uh, that shows what the so what we've plotted now is omega squared versus the optimized value for omega squared r which is uh, the optimized value for the the fit right so we need to, to indicate that over here so I'm going to add some text like so I'm going to call it sub c equal to omega squared r. It's going to make this bigger so you can clearly see it. And I'm just going to insert an arrow to say that this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this curve here. So let's just take a moment to um, appreciate that in both cases the x over here is just omega squared right so that's this what's on the x-axis r is 0.2193 which is what excel optimizes for the data and we have discovered that r has a value of 0.221 so they're quite close together so this is our optimized value and that's the value that is displayed in this chart here right and that's the black uh, fit over here but this fit is physically correct because if we extend it back it will actually pass through zero. So this is the analysis that I want you to do um, for the data that you would have obtained for circular motion of the IOLAB device.